uh, one of the first things that I did was a program called the Idea of North. It was about the North, and found there some rather extraordinary human beings, people who have gone north, not simply because it offered time and a half pay, or because they had to escape from something inside themselves that was eating at them and making urban life untenable, because they really had something to find out about themselves. They wanted to make inquiries about themselves. Hello, this is Zoe, and I feel like talking. So in the previous podcast to this, this is number 99, the previous one to this is number 100, the beginning, and we are counting down. If you have just found this podcast, you might be interested in listening to number 100, which is the first one, and then I plan on counting down and going around again, from 100 to 1, and then back again spiritual and the strange. By the way, strange means alien, or stranger, something that is unusual, uncommon, the unknown. Finding our true north, what does that mean? What if we happen to be settled in a particular location, but we have this desire to Find out who we really are. Why were we born? What are we meant to do in life? What is our purpose? And that can change throughout our lifetimes. I also spoke in the previous podcast about, I believe that there are many deaths that we experience, deaths and rebirths throughout our lifetimes that are different from our birth and our eventual death. That every time we change something in our lives, so it's like a big change, something that's big. Or it can be something that might seem small to others, but to ourselves it feels major. I believe those times of transformation are, in a way, a death and a rebirth within the lifetime that we inhabit now. So what does it mean to find our true north if we are settled in a location particularly? It can be traveling in the mind, you know, figuring out who we are, traveling in the heart as well, into our deepest soul, which like I just was speaking about, that's always shifting and changing, like the light outside. I'm looking outside my window and I'm seeing the wind playing with the leaves in a tree and how that changes and it's never the same twice it's always different even when we try to do something the same way over and over it doesn't work that way does it every moment is different that's very comforting i think it's a very comforting thought Particularly when we are going through things that feel challenging. That's a comforting thought to remember that even though that challenging time might feel the same, like maybe if we're going through something that is, you know, like maybe we're trying to recover from some trauma or maybe we're anxious or depressed. We've all globally been through a lot, right? So much. So that's just comforting to know that challenging times are not forever. Things do get better. Okay, so that's that's comforting. I began the Zoe channel as a tarot reader slash oracle reader. I feel inclined to sort of include those types of messages in these podcasts because that has a lot to do with who I am as a person. My soul, actually, my heart, my mind, how, you know, I pick up on all sorts of little things, little nuances. And yeah, so I feel like someone out there who may be listening, you may have been in the military or you may know someone who was in the military, that may be significant for you, but there's something about 
this message or parts of this message that may be helpful for you if you resonate with that. So finding one's true north. So previously, as I was just speaking about how things shift and change and things are never the same, I have a memory of a vision that I had more than a few years back. As I said, did I, did I mention I'm an artist? I'm an artist. I'm a writer also. And on that particular day that I had a vision, I was writing. And I was looking out my front window. And I remember as I looked up, in that moment that I looked up through the window, the vision I had was of tiny little tiles falling into place sort of like a mosaic, almost like water that made up the view that I was seeing in the window, if that makes sense. And they rapidly fell into place. It's like, I, it's like in that moment that I looked up, I caught that glimpse of maybe a little something about what the universe is all about and how that shifts and changes depending on my perception or our perceptions of the world. So speaking about perceptions, what is true and what isn't true? And what is our true north? And how do we find that? There's so many different personalities in the world. Even though we're born into a particular personality, we change throughout our lives. We're never really the same. We're never really the same at any moment in any given day. So it's okay to change our minds about things. So I was thinking about characters and people who have gone to find their true north, to find out who they are. I have two examples here. One is fictional and the other was a real person. So these are two examples of people who spent a lot of time in solitude, spending time in solitude with oneself. Both a state of introspection and extrospection, going inward and discovering things about themselves or about ourselves and that extrospection perceiving the world considering things both with the heart and the mind and hopefully with spirit so the first hermit is Adam a fictional character in Northern Exposure which was a television show in the 90s. So if you haven't seen the show Northern Exposure, Adam is a chef, a brilliant chef. He lives in Alaska where the TV show took place as a series. And he lives in a shack in the woods alone. And he's very... He's, he's a well-known grouch. <laughs> so this quote from Adam is, says, the universe is a hostile place. If you're interested in the full script from that quote, see Northern Exposure, Adam's pessimistic views on nature. And the second hermit was Hildegard of Bingen. She was born in 1098 in the Holy Roman Empire. And here are two quotes from her. This first quote, I feel, has something to do with Adam's quote. She wrote, There is music of heaven in all things. She was also an artist and a philosopher. They're both artists, if you think about it. I think of chefs as artists. So what I liked about Adam in the show is that 
I can appreciate the grouchy exterior, the exoskeleton of Adam. They let on in the show that he's actually a softy underneath. Because if you think about it, a chef, someone who knows how to cook so well, how to nourish others, how to please others with what he creates, that comes from compassion and a deep knowing and understanding of what others need. I feel like that's also important an important message for somebody out there about nourishing others, nourishing oneself, also picking up on something about a restaurant as well and cooking and a restaurant. So Hildegard's second quote is part of the terror is to take back our own listening to use our own voice to see our own light. Maybe that's about bringing back the pieces of oneself together after a trauma. After something like that, we know we're not the same. It reminds me of the end of The Lord of the Rings, where Frodo realizes that He's not the same as he once was. What he's been through has changed him. It's bittersweet, isn't it? What is the truth of the universe? What is it? Is the universe a hostile place? Or is it a loving, heavenly place of music? Which is the truth? What is authentic? I don't believe that there is any authenticity because as soon as we try to be authentic, we cease to be authentic. So is there a true north that exists then? I think we can become closer to that true north with spirit, with God. Even if one is an atheist, there is a higher self that we all have. So I think with that element of spirit, that ether, that silence, we can do that. It is possible. And that has a lot to do with going with the flow too, which requires faith. And like I said, that faith doesn't have to be a faith in God. If you're an atheist, we do have a higher self. I believe we come out of the womb as that higher self, that pure being of light and love and trust. The direction of north is the earth element. Some of its attributes are coldness and darkness, solidity. It's the structural system we inhabit while we're here. That it comes from someplace else though, I believe. Like that vision of the tiles that I was speaking about. I sort of think of the universe as sort of like we receive downloads based on what our feelings are, what our perceptions are, what our thoughts are. That colors our world. That in every moment, things shift and change. So every single moment of our lives is an opportunity from our higher selves or from God, if you believe in God, to accept a cup of love the Ace of Cups. Speaking about tarot, if you're not familiar with tarot cards, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles, Pentacles being of the material realm. It's the first stone laid in a foundation. It's an opportunity to build something. The Ace of Swords, which is clarity and truth. 
and victory of thought and idea, speaking and the ace of wands, which is passion and desire and initiation. It's that life force, that fire, that electric charge that keeps us going, that keeps our hearts beating, that keeps us breathing like a clock. You know, I think we're all kind of like clocks walking around in a way. We come into this world of physicality with a finite number of revolutions around that clock face. How many times, how many seconds, minutes, days, years will our unique and individual clocks turn? How many times? How much time do we have left? So in every moment, there's a choice, there's an opportunity, and all of those four elements are at our fingertips. What are we going to create with something that is gifted to us each moment? And hopefully in each moment, especially if we are always trying to stay connected to our higher selves or God, then each moment is going to be a good decision, a positive decision to take those tools the cup, the wand, the sword, and the pentacle by utilizing whatever gifts we've been given, our talents, the things that we're just naturally innately good at, what are we going to do with that time that is given to us? Like Gandalf says in Lord of the Rings, all we have to do is decide what to do with the time that is given to us. And I believe that everything comes from light. Everything that is good comes from light. Limitless light. The regal crown of infinite energy, which then expands into space and time that we experience here, that propels us to birth something into being into this physical world. Those are the higher realms of emotion and thought, ideas, inspiration, the earthly element to build something, whatever that is, whether it's writing a book or writing a piece of music or cooking something for our families, our friends, painting a picture, going for a walk, cleaning the house, calling a friend, making a recording. And being charitable doesn't always have to be with money. That can be with our time, our prayers, patting someone on the back, giving someone a hug. There's all sorts of ways to be charitable to one another, to make the world a better place that new day every day where the night before hopefully we've slept and the slate has been wiped clean so to speak and we're ready to begin again and now every moment is a revolution of time it's a cycle every moment is a cycle many many cycles many many moments in one minute and one minute being a cycle itself. And many, many of those in one hour. And the hour is a cycle. Cycles in a day. Days being cycles, cycles in a year. And years and years and years being cycles in a millennia. Ancient time. Ancient energy. And now it's up to each and every one of us to decide what to do with the time that is given to us. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope this was helpful and interesting for you. 
number 99, the next will be number 98. So I hope you will join me again. Subscribe if you feel called to do that and like this video, this podcast, and share it if you feel inspired to do that. Comment below too, I'd love to hear your thoughts or your feelings. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.